Bienvenidos a Medellín, aquí en Colombia. Tenemos una semana para explorar el país y es un país que quería venir hace mucho tiempo. Y entonces, vámonos. I came down to Colombia for some warm weather, new experiences, and a mini team retreat. And with just one week here, there was no time to waste to start exploring this South American country that had long intrigued me. My first stop was Colombia's second city of Medellín, and in my opinion, there's no better place to get a sense of the city's pulse than at the daily markets. So I hit up the Plaza Minorista markets in the morning. After wandering around a bit, I stopped by for a local lunch from one of the vendors, a Colombian beef stew with soup on the side. It was an absolutely delicious first meal in the country. We've made it here to Comuna 13, once one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Medellín, and now, a popular tourist hotspot and a Medellin must do. Also known as San Javier, this place used to be Medellin's most notorious and dangerous neighborhoods. In the 80s and 90s, this mountainous neighborhood was heavily affected by the civil conflict and the drug trade, and it was a place marked by corruption and violence. However, starting in the mid-2000s, the mayor of Medellin decided to reinvest in the community, funding new schools, infrastructure, and tourist facilities. Combine that with a burgeoning street art scene and expression of creativity in the post-violence era, and Comuna 13 has become one of Medellin's best attractions these days, significantly elevating the quality of life of its local residents. The next day, I decided to take a day trip about two hours outside of Medellin to a place called Guatapé on the eastern side of Antioquia province. A trip out here to Guatapé allows you to admire some of the more impressive natural landscapes that Colombia has to offer, most notably the huge rock that stands all on its own out here in this region. And naturally, our day tour was centered around this rock, whether it was climbing it, 300 steps, 400 more to go, or taking a boat tour out into the lakes and admiring it from afar. Our tour also brought us to a local village for lunch, as well as the colorful local town of Guatapé itself. Now, before we get on to the next thing I did in Medellin, I should mention two other things that this city is known for. One, a very strong digital nomad culture, and I spent quite a bit of time working at one of the many co-working spaces in town. And number two, well, let's just say the digital nomads like to party it up at night as well, especially on Tuesdays when it's known as Gringo Tuesday. Day three in Medellin, and I'm doing another tour here, this time in Barrio de la Sierra. It's a place on the eastern side of the city that tourists almost never go to, but my guide Arturo here is kind enough to bring me on this Friday afternoon. Arturo was the guide who took me to Comuna 13. It's at this point that I should also mention Medellin's excellent public transit system. We took the tram and then a series of cable cars up to Barrio de la Sierra. And after getting off, I was confronted by a series of young boys that were just as curious about me as I was about them. Let's just say they don't see many Chinese faces in town around here. Now the reason we're on this tour is to experience one of my favorite things and one of the things I was looking forward to the most when coming to Colombia, and that's coffee. It's gonna be a coffee tour, apparently award-winning coffee from one of the competitions that was hosted in Medellin, so I'm excited to sample some of them. We did 700 steps yesterday in Guatapé, 500 more today in Barrio de la Sierra. It's tiring. After climbing up a series of steps, we finally got picked up for a motorcycle ride up to the coffee farm. This would be my first ever coffee tour and I was especially curious what it would be like as an ardent coffee drinker myself. We spoke a little bit about the history of the coffee farm up here in the hills and how they only recently achieved prominence with their export quality production. And after that, it was time for me to get my hands dirty myself. So I'm being put to work right now to pick the coffee beans if I wanna enjoy my next cup of coffee here at the incredible coffee farm. When you're picking the coffee fruit, make sure to go for the fully red ones and don't get any of the stem. I proceeded along the process of planting, drying, husking, grinding, and packaging the coffee. And finally, I unlocked my reward of another cup. Altogether, going on the coffee tour was certainly an eye-opening experience, definitely worth pushing my flight to Bogota back for a few hours. All right, I've wrapped up my time in Medellin and now I'm in the capital of Bogota. I'm staying at the W Hotel and I've got about half a day's time to explore the capital. Everybody I met in Medellin basically said to spend more time there and spend less time here in Bogota. So I ended up changing my flight to spend all of yesterday in Medellin. So now I'm curious what there is to see here in Bogota and let's go find out in the limited time that we have. 
Now, most of my time in the capital of Bogota was spent in the city center around the neighborhood of La Candelaria. And unfortunately, the day was marked by heavy rain, so I stopped into some museums and cafes. I've got to say, my time in Bogota hasn't quite worked out the way I wanted it to. I'm stopping here for some arepas and coffee, but it's raining really hard outside. It rains quite a bit in this city, and I've been feeling a little bit under the weather these couple of days. And so even though I had intended to do quite a bit of sightseeing during my one day in town, it doesn't quite look like I'll be able to get as much done as I wanted to. You do have to remember that when traveling, not everything always works out the way you want it to. Sometimes the best laid plans can still go awry. Some cities, you'll get everything you're looking for out of it. Others, you'll probably have to leave a few things for next time. And here in Bogota, that's probably gonna be the case. A city of eight million people and dozens of distinct neighborhoods, Bogota is a place that I certainly didn't do justice to on this particular visit, but I'll just as certainly be back in the future. Now, I'm happy I was able to check out some of the main sites around La Candelaria. However, I do regret not having made time for the funicular ride up to Monserrate which is a place that our team member Josh had visited on his recent trip to Bogota and he had really enjoyed. And speaking of Josh, here he is. We're in Cartagena on the Caribbean coast and it's gonna be a party night. So, funny story here. Colombia is actually on an election weekend this weekend and so there's no liquor sales. However, we've somehow managed to convince this bar to give us an extra bottle of tequila at 8.30 p.m. Needless to say, the rest of the evening and a little bit of the next day got away from us. Check out these incredible ocean views here at the Hyatt Regency Cartagena. Now I'm still a little bit hungover from last night, but it is time to go out there and explore a little bit of the city. Now I was mostly in Cartagena for our mini team retreat, but I did want to get a little bit of sightseeing done as well. And that's mostly concentrated in Cartagena's old town within the old city walls. You can clearly see the affluence of the Spanish colonial era here in the walled city, and it makes for a very nice stroll during the daytime. There's quite a bit of Spanish colonial influence as well as some Caribbean influences, and I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Of course, what also attracts people here to Colombia's Caribbean coast is quite simply the infinity pools, the beach, and the relaxing vibes. And that's exactly how I wrapped up this quick trip to Colombia.